<laughs> I think really the key element right now when it comes to worth in the market is people always say something is always worth as much as someone is willing to pay. And what they need is these toys that we're all talking about and everything like that, they really have to resonate personally with every individual. They really need to mean something. And if you're sitting there and you're willing to pay $100 and someone's willing to pay $200, you know, the market's going to go up. It's because people are, they're coveting these memories that we had when we were children and the prices keep going up and up and up as people get older and they have more disposable income. So that's really one of the factors that's driving the market right now. It's because of the new millennium, the market crashed. It's just because we went through a recession and, and over where I live, you know, we went through this housing problem where the houses weren't worth anything and people got scared. Uh, they weren't spending as much money as they were. So where you had this collector who's spending 500 a month on his toy collection is now spending maybe 100. Uh, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs, so they had to prioritize. Um, but the interesting thing is, is you know, I talked to these collectors and, and, and I, I held on to them throughout the 2000s and, and throughout the recession. It's because of their love of collecting. And they said, while I can't spend $100 a month on my collecting habit, I'll spend 50 or I'll spend 20 because it was that passion that, that basically drove them and, and, and you know they wanted to keep doing it. On your show, what, what do you look for? What, what, uh, you know, what do you get excited about? What do you see? What's that, that type of light that you say, oh my god, you know, that's... I, that's a great question. I, I tend to look for, um, I look for the toys that mean a lot to me when I was, that meant a lot to me when I was a kid. Uh, you know, every now and then, I, I see so much, to be honest with you. I mean, we, there's, whatever you see on the show uh, for the half hour, you've got to add probably about five hours onto that, because we shoot, we shoot every day uh, for 15 hours, 12 to 15 hours. So when you see someone's house and it's four minutes, we're there all, all day. So we see like a lot more toys than we actually make on the show. A lot of people fantasize with you know walking into a thrift a thrift shop. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 that, 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 a lot of people fantasize about you know walking into the thrift store or, or someplace and just casually stumbling upon uh, Spider-Man, you know, uh, yeah. Amazing Spider-Man first edition or first edition uh, Superman, whatever. How real is that? I mean, is that? It, it, believe it or not, it does happen. Um, finds like that are still being found every day. I mean, two weeks ago I called, I, I emailed my, my executive producer and all the producers, and I said, I can't believe this, a guy just contacted me, and he had uh, Star Wars cases, like actual shipping cases back in the 70s. And he you know, emailed me, I'm like, yeah, pff, right, whatever, sure, he's got to be talking about new stuff. Photographs started coming in, and this guy had like original Star Wars cases from the 70s. And, and he, he bought them way back then and had them in the original shipping cartons. And like, here's this incredible find that just showed up. And see the future of your of the show. Of the show, that's great. Uh, I would love, I'd love to get into more stories about people and why they collected. I mean, we center a lot on money. Um, I want to talk to people a little more about why they collect and what collecting means to them. I would love to go international more. Uh, the, the beautiful thing about Puerto Rico is this is the first venue outside of the continent of the U.S. for us. So it's very, very, it's very, very meaningful to us. Um, like I said, we've got, the, we've got the entire crew here. I mean, and basically, everyone who ever worked on the show is like down there. We've got like 11 people. Um, I'm sure like in the budget meeting that did not go over well. They're probably like, you bring 11 people? Well, we brought like, like the audio guy, the, uh, the lovely woman who does makeup and hair. We look so wonderful. She's down here. Everyone's down here. So it's basically like one big party. Uh, but that's very, very important to us. It's very, very meaningful. And this, this Puerto Rico Comic Con is extremely significant because this really is the stepping stone for our future because we do want to go to England. We do want to go to Italy. We do want to go to Germany. And I think that's very, very important right now because people on Travel Channel and people in the U.S. and people wherever are watching the show going, wow, you know, it's it's kind of cool, it's kind of clicky, a little niche, you know, maybe like a little, little show by collectors. But I want them to realize that this collecting and this passion for vintage memorabilia and pop culture is global. It's really this global type of thing that everyone is sharing around the world. 
And if you don't get it, well, you're missing the boat because there's nothing weird about it. There's nothing nerdy or geeky about it. It's this wonderful thing about really embracing a memory from when you were younger. And, and it's a global phenomenon. So the short answer, which I'm apparently not incapable of giving you, <laughs> the short answer is I, I, I want to go global. I want to go around the world. And, and I definitely think, um, you know, I think the potential there is fantastic.